Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're answering a number of questions you submitted that aren't quite robust enough to have their own episode. These topics include SBRs, former felons in guns, FFLs, and everybody's favorite, 922R. Sharps Brothers offers some of the most unique and well-built AR-15 and AR-10 receivers around, with models like the Warthog, the Jack, the Hellbreaker, or even the classic-looking Mean Streak. You'll be sure to find something to fit your build. To learn more about these and all of the other products that they make, head over to sharpsbros.com. Before we get started, I've relaunched my website, adamkraut.com, where you can find the petition in order to put me back on the ballot for the NRA Board of Directors in 2018. That's right, we're going for it again. It also contains information about my position on various issues and ways in which you can join the grassroots effort. Now, on to the questions. Josh S. asks, is there a way I can amend a Form 1 for an SBR to run a shorter barrel than what I put on the form? I already have received the approved Form 1. Yes, there is. You can write an email or a letter to ATF stating that you are changing the configuration of the firearm. You'll want to include the new barrel length and the overall length. They will then update their records to reflect that change. Whether or not it's necessary remains to be seen as I'm waiting on a response from ATF's legal counsel. David R. wants to know, can someone who was convicted of a felony and had their rights restored by the state they were convicted in work in a gun shop or as a gunsmith? The real question here is, is a person who was convicted of a felony and had their rights restored by the state they were convicted in still a prohibited person? The answer, like a number of law-related questions is, it depends. You have to remember, an individual can lose their ability to own or possess firearms and ammunition at both the state and federal levels. The first thing we need to know is whether the prohibition was due to a state or federal law or both. If the person was only prohibited under state law, a restoration of their rights at the state level may allow them to possess firearms. I've seen documents from states such as Florida, which restore an individual's rights, but specifically states that it does not include firearms rights. If they are prohibited under federal law or both, again, a restoration of rights may allow them to possess firearms. Assuming that the restoration of rights alleviated any disability the individual would have had under state law, the question then becomes, is it still federally prohibiting? In instances where the conviction is not expunged, pardoned, or set aside, those individuals would still be prohibited at the federal level. In short, the relief has to restore their ability to possess firearms and ammunition at both levels, assuming they were prohibited at both the state and federal level. Most people are prohibited at the federal level long before the state level. Kevin M. asks, I've watched several of your YouTube videos, but I'm confused about my personal build. I have a 1911 frame and an 80% AR receiver. Do I need an FFL? Excellent question, Kevin. It seems I may have confused some people as to whether they can build their own firearms after the, wait, there are nine types of FFLs episode. If you are building a firearm for your own personal use, you do not need an FFL. An FFL is needed, in the context of building firearms, when an individual is engaged in the business in manufacturing firearms. I suggest you check out the link in the description to the definitions in the federal regulations. You'll find the regulations define the terms engaged in the business and principal objective of livelihood and profit. Just so everyone is clear, you don't actually have to make a profit in order to be found engaged in the business. Gregory S. wants to know, what are the laws regarding home or personal use FFLs? If you do have an FFL, can you import any firearm? I suspect your first question is in relation to having an FFL based out of your home. You may have seen articles from certain blogs which were stating that ATF was no longer granting FFLs to individuals who wish to operate them out of their homes. This is patently false. ATF will grant an FFL to an individual who wishes to operate one out of their home provided that the location is zoned in such a manner that they can conduct the transfer of a firearm to another individual. If the location is not zoned correctly, you will not receive an FFL. As far as personal use, the law is clear. An FFL is granted to those who are engaged in the business of dealing, importing, or manufacturing firearms. And yes, I'm ignoring several types of licenses in that analysis. You cannot get one simply to enhance your personal collection. 
As far as importing firearms, if you haven't checked out the 9 types of FFLs video, I suggest you do so. There is a particular license that one must acquire in order to import firearms. Philip J, and that's not Philip J. Fry, the third. <laughs> Philip J asks, is a rifle with a barrel shorter than 16 inches, but an overall length greater than 26 inches considered an SBR? Indeed it is. You have to remember the definition which states, the term short barrel rifle means a rifle having one or more barrels less than 16 inches in length, meaning that if it has a barrel length of less than 16 inches, it is an SBR, and any weapon made from a rifle if such weapon as modified has an overall length of less than 26 inches, meaning that if the firearm were a rifle to begin with and you reduce the overall length to less than 26 inches, it would be an SBR. The two criteria, barrel length and overall length, operate independent of one another. That is to say, it could be one and not the other and still be an SBR. George W. wants to know, can you explain 922R and the implication for those of us that like guns which are imported? I sure can, but you're going to have to wait for that one. That requires its own episode. Oh, come on! <laughs> Hopefully that answers a question you may have had. If you guys like this episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button and share it around with your friends. Be sure to check out my website, adamkraut.com. Remember, if you have a question you want answered on the show, head on over to the legal brief section on theguncollective.com. And don't forget to like The Gun Collective on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Full30, Snapchat, and wherever else you can catch us on social media. And as always... Thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.